Hey everybody and welcome to another Jamovi tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about how to set up a data file for Jamovi. Let's, let's say that you are not uploading uh, a data or you're not opening a data file from another source that is already compiled. You have to actually start your own from scratch. So that's what we're going to do in this one. In episode two of this tutorial series, we sort of talked about how to set up your data, but I used a data set in that video. I'll, I'll link it here. This one sort of is connected to that one. But here I, I want to talk about making a tutorial. Or excuse me, <laughs> I am making a tutorial. But in this particular one, I want to start by um, setting up a data set from scratch using Jamovi's tools. So let's jump straight into that. To start off, we are using Jamovi's current build version 2.0.0 uh, as of a couple of months ago or last month or whatever it is at the time of recording. So let's set up some data. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe create 15, uh, 15 data sets. So what we're going to do is we, you can see here that we've got an A, B, and C already given to us. But I also want to sort of use variable view, which is new. I have a video on that as well. We can talk about it. So here we have our three variables that you saw in the data tab, but now they're just listed as names. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call A. I mean, this is going to be subject. So this is going to be the subject number. So this is just, you know, case. Um, case number rep representing a single person. We're going to have 15 of them. And we are going to um, correlate, sure, I, I'm probably not going to actually go through the correlation, but we are going to do their height. And this is um, going to be in centimeters. I don't know why I capitalized it. The in should be in centimeters. So this is just a note for us that we are measuring height in centimeters. And then C is going to be, whoops, come on now weight and we are measuring weight in capitalize it you don't really need to capitalize it but you know make it look nice and we're going to measure weight in kilograms although i just realized that i capitalized the h there not the w there we go and so if we go back <laughs> if we go back oops the other thing that i want to change here um if you double click on these and we're going to set these up here too um, if you double click on the um icon or in data view, if you double click on the column heading, it will open up the, the variable options. And this is the only way you can get to changing these variable options. You can't change them in variable view, although, you know, that might be nice. It might end up, you know, they might end up adding that in. But for now, we are double clicking. It doesn't matter if we go through data or through the variable to get that. So and you can obviously put these the name here and the description down below and those reflect what we have here as you can see. So this measurement type um, is by default a nominal, but what we want to do is we want to make it an ID. And the reason why we want to make it an ID is because it will not be an option to select for any analysis. And just in case you're like me and you want to make sure that you don't accidentally misclick putting <laughs> subject numbers into a correlation, oh my gosh, they are going up linearly. One, two, three. Of course, you're going to end up with a bad, bad situation there. So we want to make sure that this is represented as an ID variable, and it won't be choosable for any kind of analysis. Uh, the data type is um, on auto. And so depending on what kind of information that I put in that column, if we go back to data here, if I start putting decimal numbers in for subject numbers, then it's going to change. So we have inter integer, decimal, or a text. Um, you may also be familiar with this as a string variable. But because we're going to use whole numbers for IDs, then we're going to leave it as an integer. Missing values can be added through this feature, but I think I'm going to save that for another, um, another tutorial video. So we are going to ignore missing values for now, uh, since this is a integer kind of data, and it is also a ID variable, we don't need to deal with levels. So we're gonna go ahead and close that. So now we have subject all represented there uh, as, a, uh, as an ID variable. Double click on height, and since we are measuring it in centimeters, when we change the measurement type, we are going to change it to a continuous variable because centimeters are a continuous scale from zero to infinity, we'll say. Um, the data type, now, if we did fractions of centimeters, so, you know, 180.5 centimeters, so halfway between 180 centimeters, 181 centimeters, if we started entering those in like that, you can see this will change because it's on auto. So if I do 180.5, if I do 180.5, it will change to a decimal. But I don't know if that makes a lot of sense for using something as small as centimeters, so we probably wouldn't use that. And if I change it to integer, I take away the auto function, and you can see that the 0.5 is dropped. It's not, it is not rounded up. It's just truncated if you manually select integer, if there is data already existing here. If I delete this data, then I have the option to go back 
to choose one or the other. I can go back to integer if I want to. But you can see that now that I've done that, I've put data in, even though I deleted it, I no longer have the auto option. So now I'm going to have to set it to decimal if I really want to include decimal to make it integer, at least for me. And same thing goes for weight. We're not, there's not much we need to do right now in kilograms. Yes, people do weigh fractions of kilograms, and that is actually important here. And we may end up using that. But first, we want to make sure that we select it as continuous, since kilograms are a continuous ratio variable from zero to infinity. Uh, and then we are gonna um, we're gonna do decimal, and so we're gonna ignore the the auto there. And so when we when we put in, I don't know how many kilograms somebody weighs. Uh, let's just say fifty. <laughs> double click on that. Let's just say fifty point one. We can do that. And if I just do sixty one kilograms, then it'll put a point zero there for me. Um, height, on the other hand, since we called it an integer. Any value that I put in here, 180.9, for example, and we go down, could not perform observation, should not get here. So this is a little, uh, this is a little issue for you. Okay, could not perform operations, should not get here. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it means that it, it, since it's not set as auto, and I put in a decimal point, it cannot deal with the fact, because it's not an integer. 180.9 is not an integer. Okay, but if I change it to, I think I have to get rid of it first, because it's having a conniption fit. Have to change it first. There we go. Then I can put 180.9. So it doesn't round it up for you unless you go from auto to non-auto. And there's no backseas apparently, unless I delete this somehow and re-add it. So if I were to add it, another variable here, height. Okay, it won't be allowed to be the same, but if I did height one here and made it continuous, I could leave the auto on here. And if I put in 180.9, it will change that to decimal. But if I go back to integer, it will get rid of the uh, it'll get rid of the decimal point again. You can see 180.9 was not was not um, rounded up, but auto mode got taken off. And as far as I'm aware, I cannot seem to find how to put that back. So I mean, if a, if a dev wants to correct me on that one, that's totally fine. Or if a power user, I consider myself a pretty big power user, but you know, if if that um, isn't the case, then then let me know. We are going to delete this variable. Okay, so you right click on the column heading and we go to delete, or you can um, click delete here. Right, so a column. This you can see that these are columns that are colored, either add or delete. This will delete variables. These are delete cases or rows. Okay, so we're going to delete this column, and it's going to ask me if I'm sure. Just, you know, always important to have. Uh, are you sure? <laughs> always important. Um, and so we're going to click OK, and then we don't want a new variable here. So let's finish putting this together. Uh, I can close this, so I have a little bit more room to show you. So let's do one, two, oop, 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 three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, ten. That's not the wrong one. Uh, right one. I put a little tilde or uh, accent back tick, if you will. 13, 14, and 15. Okay. Then we just need to put in the other ones. Uh, now I don't remember what I set this as. Decimal. Okay. Well, let's change it to integer. Okay. So going back to integer from decimal does truncate it. So, um, and I did 108. I meant to do 180. 108 centimeters is really, is really short. It's a short person. 180 centimeters is a six foot tall person. So we're going to sort of hover around there. Um, 186. I don't know. Uh, 158. 192 is a tall, taller person. Um, 1.9 meters is really what that is. Um, 1.9 meters is a lot of feet. I don't know. Can anybody be 1.9 meters? That's almost two meters tall. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I'm just kind of just kind of freewheeling this one here. Uh, 164, 182, uh, 175. I don't know how tall I am. 165, 177, 181. Oops, too many eights. Uh, one, another six foot tall, even. And 159, sure. Uh, weight, again, this is a decimal, and we're going to keep it that way because people have fractions of kilograms. So 63.5. See, this is what you do. Imagine I'm flipping through. Of course, you would go across rows instead of down columns. At least in my opinion, you want to get through a full case. So let's say you had like 20 different, you know, 20 different variables down the line here. You want to make sure that you are doing a case by case. And that's, that's the tedium of... Um, that's the tedium of this whole process here. I really don't know what I'm doing as far as numbers go. Uh, how much did I make the 185.4? Okay, maybe they are that big. Yeah, I don't know. 1.6? No, it's 2.2 pounds per kilogram, I think. Pretty sure. Something like that. Um, you can imagine how, if you are a pounds person, you can imagine how much these people weigh as I go through them. Cool. There you go. And that's uh, setting up this. But how about if I want to add in one more variable just to show you how to set up a, uh, another one. So what we want to do is we want to add a variable. And we are going to 
append it, okay? Which means we're gonna add it to the end of our list, which is what we're gonna do right here. So double click on it and we're gonna call this one condition, okay? Uh, thank you computer for fixing that for me. Uh, this is the experimental condition. Um, yeah, so it's an experimental condition, which means we've manipulated it. And so that means we are gonna leave it as a nominal variable because nominal are categories. So we're going to keep that. We're not ranking those categories, so it's not ordinal. So we're going to leave it as, as nominal. And we're going to keep it as an integer because what that's going to do is we're going to use numbers for the levels. So we need to add some levels here. So we're going to enter in a value. We're going to do one, and then we're going to hit OK. And then we're going to add in another level, and we're going to do two. OK? One and two. One and two. And I think I set it to be about the same. OK? And this level is going to be control. And this level is going to be experimental. And you can see that they've been assigned a one and a two. And you can see when we change the from one to two, and if I added a third person or a 16th person and I put two, you can see that person then goes to experimental. Um, I clicked, I should just stay right there. There we go, right? And so that person becomes experimental. But I'm going to delete that because we only have 15 people, although now it thinks we have 16, okay? So again, double clicking on this, we put in the name of the condition or the name of the variable, kind of variable, what we're going to use it as, we're going to use integers, and then we are going to name those levels, and it's going to get assigned a 1 and a 2, okay? Um, and if you have unused levels, we can retain those by clicking this to on, so let's say I had a 3 and a 4, but in this analysis, I'm not going to use 3 and 4, I'm just going to use 1 and 2, so on and so forth, okay? And so we can do, now we can do a t-test, pairing experimental and control on their height or weight or whatever, that sort of thing. So this is how you would set up a data set from scratch back in the day you used to put stuff on paper and you used to have to transcode that going from paper to spreadsheet that is um i mean if you're still using paper this is what you're going to have to do you're going to have to transcode and transcribe and make sure that every piece of data is exactly right and that is how you set up this kind of data set from scratch in jamovi if you like this content consider leaving a like if you like this if you like this video consider leaving a like if you like this content consider subscribing for more data tutorials jamovi jasp you name it, tutorials. Thanks for watching.